So I decided to take a look at some of the videos you guys sent me, and there were plenty of interesting ones that caught my attention. 90% of what you guys send me are flat earth videos. Y'all want to kill my brain cells that badly, huh? Here's a video on the equator. Apparently flat earthers can't comprehend some basic science, so let's teach them a lesson. Man, I was just sitting in my classroom. <laughs> What's with this, man? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Please continue. And my teacher was telling us how the equator works. And she says it's a line that goes straight across the earth. Right? Sorry about his narration. For some reason, there's like double of him. And it's really annoying to listen to. I can't really do anything about it in my editing software, so you'll just have to deal with it. So then I had a question for my teacher. And I said, why are places near the equator hotter? Whoa, would you look at that? This question was asked by a 6th grader? <laughs> Maybe it's time to go back to middle school. Sorry, sorry. Serious type. I'm serious. I'm totally taking this seriously. Why are they hotter, Mrs. Teacher? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And she answers, On the Earth, the equator receives more sunshine than do the poles. <laughs> This is due to simple geometry of the Earth's curvature. A given amount of sunshine in a beam falling on the equator, which points directly at the sun, has a much more intense effect than the glancing ray spread over a much larger area of the curving surface near the poles. And then my teacher has the audacity to show me this little graphic. And she says, the equator is hottest, when the sun is hitting it at 90 degrees. Not a bad visual there. What could possibly be so hard to understand? Oh, okay. And then she says, it's cooler at angles. So anything, so 45 degree angles, 30 degree angles, it's coldest. Let's just throw it in there, 60 degree angles. You're saying angles get cooler, right? I hope your teacher did explain why, though. It's not just the angles themselves. It's the fact that the angles lead to a greater spread of sunlight over a larger area. I also forgot to mention earlier, the greater the angle also means the sunlight has to travel more through the atmosphere before hitting the Earth. The atmosphere contains particles which can act as aerosols to reflect sunlight back to space. That's another reason it's hotter if you're directly under the sun. So I go to earth.nullschool.net, a visualization of global weather conditions, forecast by supercomputers, updated every three hours, and they show me this photo. Sea surface temperature on the globe. Now that looks very similar to what my teacher showed me, right? This all makes sense? Oh wait, no it doesn't, because last time I checked, our Earth had a tilt. Remember, our Earth is tilted 23.4 degrees. Before I get into the details of your argument, I believe that the site you're using gives the current conditions, not the overall heat map over the course of a year. I mean, you did say updates every three hours, after all. If you wanted to take the Earth's tilt into consideration, make sure you're at least looking at the site during the summer or winter, when the Earth is tilting towards or away from the sun, rather than just to the side like it does during the spring and fall. Judging by the date you uploaded this video, it seems that you looked at this map during the spring, so uh, you kind of fucked up there, didn't you? Because there's exactly two times during the year when the angle of the sun light hitting the equator is 90 degrees, and that's during the spring and fall equinoxes. If you're going to bring up an argument stemming from the Earth's tilt, at least show us this map during the summer or winter or something. So let's see what they got wrong. They're saying the equator is like this. The sun is hitting the Earth at 90 degrees. That's what they're saying. But wait, we're going to take the tilt into account because we're not idiots. And we're going to make this little diagram. So now the equator is exactly where it should be. At 66.6 .6 degrees. We subtract 23.4 from 90. And then we get 66.6. .6. And I wonder to myself, if my teacher is saying it gets cooler at angles, and I assume you believe that 66.6 .6 is an angle, right? I'm thinking, shouldn't it be 90? Shouldn't our equator be like this, Mrs. Teacher? 
Alrighty, I believe I let that play on for long enough. <sighs> Sixth graders could probably answer this. I can't believe I'm explaining this. Our Earth does have a tilt, so what? It's true that it'll make it hotter for whatever hemisphere points towards the sun, but don't forget that this angle changes throughout the year. During June, July, and August, the northern hemisphere is pointing towards the sun, while it's the opposite during December, January, and February. If the Earth always pointed towards the sun all year long like you have in your diagram there, then yes, the equator would probably look like that, I guess. But that's simply not the case. If you take the average temperatures and sunlight received throughout the entire year, the equator would come out on top in general. Of course, this isn't entirely accurate. We actually have another equator called the thermal equator, which maps out a set of locations on every longitude that has the highest average yearly temperatures, and it varies depending on the geography too. The equator itself has a lot of other implications attached to it, not just temperature. Anyway, let's take a small break before we continue. I mean, according to your logic, our equator is in the wrong place. Remember you said it gets cooler at angles? Alright, well yeah, during the summer and winter, the equator isn't receiving sunlight from a 90 degree angle, but the angle change is hardly relevant. That small degree of angle change is only going to reduce the sunlight received by a fraction, but if we're talking about areas with greater latitudes, like the North and South Poles, then that's an angle worth mentioning. I don't know, but you should certainly know. Ha ha ha, look at me, I'm laughing so hard. Ha ha ha, those fucking globetards. So I'm going to now going to simulate a 90 degree angle on the equator, even though that this doesn't happen in real life. So in this photo, the sun is hitting the equator at 90 degrees. But wait, another problem is introduced. Shouldn't Antarctica be melted if it's hitting it at 90 degrees? The fuck are you talking about? The sunlight is almost hitting the poles at 180 degrees. That's freezing cold. How could that melt the ice? Well, I guess the ice is melting because of global warming and stuff, but you know, not relevant here. You seem to be bad at both basic science and math, and you can't even keep track of your fucking angles. Just get me out, oh my god. I mean, shouldn't our equator look like this, Mrs. Teacher? How? What? Even if the Earth is always tilted like that, the equator wouldn't look like that. Here, let me fix it for you. There we go. You know, we actually do have a line for that. Yeah, yeah, I remember. It's called the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. These lines receive sunlight at 90 degrees during the summer and winter solstices, respectively. So I think, hmm, maybe there's something wrong with the whole globe model. So I go back to earth.nullschool.net. I click on the flat earth model, and ho! Oh, would you look at that? Something that actually makes sense. The sun moves around the equator in a circle, just like we predict it to. There are numerous problems with the flat earth model when it comes to this, especially when we start talking about seasons, but of course that's a topic for another video. You know, sometimes I just don't know what goes through the head of flat earthers. Like you bring up the tilt of the earth not even asking why people would even claim the earth tilts. Why would the government or whatever say the earth tilts if it just supposedly leads to flaws in the globe model? For no real reason or something? And if you just thought about this, you would have typed that shit into google and found the debunk to your own argument. It's absolutely fascinating how you flat earthers just failed to even think about the context of the things they're claiming. I mean, it's absolutely absurd if you still believe the equator is possible on a globe. It doesn't make any sense. It contradicts itself two or three times. Or maybe you're just not very educated. Just saying. So it seems like what's occurring in real life isn't what's occurring with the globe model in real life. Okay, that's just about as much as I can take, thank you very much. You flat earthers should really try to explain the sun setting below the horizon, or lunar eclipses, and things like that, before you try to debunk something you know nothing about. And you have the audacity to say that the globe model doesn't fit with reality, get that nonsense out of here. Anyway, that's my time. I should be doing a collaboration with Shannon Q debunking answers in Genesis. I don't know if it's done yet, since I'm recording this way before even writing the script, so yeah. I mean, I guess there'll be a link down below or something. Maybe. If it's done, that is. Bye.